Hey, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh. And I'm Eric. And Eric, you have been flying multi-rotors for a long time. For a while. But this is new to you. Today we're going to yes. be showing you how to program the Naze 32 board with Clean Flight. Yeah, and quite frankly, this thing scares me to death still. So I'm. this is a new board, and for most of you guys who know me, I am a huge DJI NASA guy, which I know I'm going to get lots of hate mail for that. But um, yeah, this is a new board, and there's a lot more settings that you can do on this. And so it can be intimidating. It's a very powerful board. It is, but it can be very intimidating when you first get it out of the oh, box yeah. if you're not sure what to do to get started. On average, an Ace 32 board uh, costs about 32 bucks. There's lots of different manufacturers that make them. Um, they're actually, the main uh, flight plan or flight configurator, GUI? Uh, yeah, graphic user interface, interface I believe. Is a base flight. Yeah. But, but we're very, very fond of clean flight. And that was thanks to uh, Crafty Dan and another amazing gentleman that yes. has helped us out immensely. Matter of fact, you immensely in giving you a crash course on this. On the yeah, and that? his name is Osbjorn Valsa. Um, he, and I hope I got your name right, Osbjorn. Um, he is uh, he's, he's Flying Circus. Viking. Yeah, he's our, our, our uh, Viking. He's Flying Circus on our flight test forum, and he has been really generous with all his knowledge. He knows so much about this compared to what we know, and he spent you know miscellaneous hours on Skype with me yes. and uh, Facebook chat and all that. So, Osbjorn, Thank you, sir. You helped me out a lot. And today's goals are going to be very simple. We're going to go from configuring uh, to uh, programming to setting up and to tuning a simple multi-rotor platform. Today we're going to be programming something a little different. Yeah. We're going to be programming a race quad. Yeah. Um, and we didn't really have one of those before. And no. So I kind of fixed that. Um, <laughs> I wanted a mini and you know, there's all these different types of platforms, but I thought why not take our flight test electro hub yes. and turn it into an inexpensive way to kind of enter into the mini quad market, yep. so to speak. And a matter of fact, if you're watching this video right now, these components that you really did to switch this up, if you notice, this isn't laying flat, is it? No, sir. This is a little twist that you've put on that has made amazing changes in the characteristics and the performance of the multi-rotors. Sure. And uh, these are just little simple angle art brackets and also because you're so about precision centering up your uh, your board here. Yeah, I like to have my flight controllers mounted as close to center of gravity. I know that the accelerometers and the gyros on the board are not dead center of the board, but having that board as close over center of gravity of your copter as mm -hmm. possible makes the flight controller a little bit more efficient, in my opinion, mm -hmm. because it um, it allows the controller to uh, not have to correct. If it's way off of center, then the flight controller doesn't know where the center of gravity is, and it's making corrections that it wouldn't have to if it was closer to the CG. So keeping your, your quadcopter and multi-rotor balanced, uh, keeping everything under the center of gravity that's supposed to be as close as possible is only going to help you. Oh, indeed. It's going to keep things from fighting as much, and uh, so that's basically configuration that we're going to be working on today uh, but also most NAS 32s come in many different formats do they? Yeah there's full NAS boards there's acro NAS boards so there's a lot of different ones that you're going to see yeah. when you read about those. One thing we definitely recommend here and what we're going to start you with is basically the lowest common denominator that's something that's been unsoldered and Peter's actually going to show us how to solder this up and get it ready. NAS board time so basically what you have is you have your breakout cable you have two sets of choices of pins here you got the 90 degree uh, pins or the straight out pins. This is basically up to you guys and your personal preferences and the way you want to mount it and such. But Eric wants to use these guys, this the 90 degrees, so we're going to go and use those. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to solder the uh, breakout cable, which is your RC input. I'm going to solder that on there. I'm going to actually place the pins in here and push this down. Because basically when I start soldering, the solder gets kind of hot, that it makes the plastic soft, and the pins will actually move around on the shells and they actually can melt out of there. Before we begin, we're also going to choose our solder. The solder I'm using is 6040, and this is basically the recommended stuff for most of this electronic type work, and it's what makes soldering real easy. Don't use anything acid core for this. We're going to go and grab our soldering jig there, jig that up, grab that, get that up. about as aligned as close as possible. Really satisfied with that. It'll clean the iron off. Get some solder on there. I'm gonna hit one of the pins. All right, so we've got the top side solder. You're gonna need to do the bottom. Now you don't really need the jig since it's already jigged up. And the reason why I put this in here before soldering that on, rather than just trying to stick the pins in and solder just like that is uh, sometimes you can use a little bit of heat, a little bit of heat gets on here, and this housing is made out of pretty soft plastic, and you can actually make the pins float and move around, and even fall out. So I use the uh, breakout cable as a, a holder to keep everything in place. I 
cancer resistance is enough that it's really essential that you have a really clean iron and, and a clean tip when you do this because it makes this work so easy even with this giant chisel because you can kind of see how big the chisel is compared to the surface that we're soldering because I'm using a very fine point of it but it's clean. All right so now we're going to use the 90 degree pins. We have our ESC speed controller side and we also have the uh, accessory side for like the buzzer, the battery, and the, tel uh, the telemetry pins. The way I do this is like to stick the pins in there and they actually have a quite a bit, probably quite a decent friction fit. So I'm just gonna leave them as is, flip that over, and just hit all the pads. This side's very easy to do. There's actually really no tricks here. You just get some solder on them and it blows right to the surface. And we're all done. That's basically all there is to solder the board. Okay, so this is what you get normally, and thanks yep. to Peter, he got us all set up with our pins, and uh, I think we're ready to start mounting. Absolutely. So what's the first thing that we're going to do with this? Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get a USB cable, and we're going to plug right into that port right here, and we're going to flash the board with the clean flight or base flight, if that's okay. what you want to do. You would update your base flight firmware, or we're okay. going to do clean flight, so we're going to reflash it completely. Great. Now, the nice thing about this is this is actually an application on Google. Yes. So it's no longer the old days where you had these crazy... Uh, you know, files that you extracted and sure. opened up the interface and jumped on the internet. This is an online app that is very easy to use, both base flight and clean flight. Right in the Google App Store. Right so you can Google go onto Google Chrome and you can download this app. And in fact, we're going to show you how to do that right now. All right. So the first thing we're going to do then is we're going to go, um, you can do this. The nice thing too about this is you can do this on PC or Mac. Um, yeah. I'm a Mac user. Um, I do have PCs as well. So I actually have it on both platforms and I've tried it on both and it works equally well across the board. It looks the, the exact same, doesn't it? It does. Um, there's no differences that I've found so far. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to go to Google Chrome okay. and you can type in clean flight. Let's Not like that. flight tests, F L I G H T. Yes, that's right. Um, and then you, when you hit enter, the first thing that pops up is the Clean Flight Configurator on the Chrome Web Store. So we're going to click that. And when we do, that's going to bring up the Google Chrome Web Store. And right there is the Clean Flight Configurator. Um, you're just going to go over here and check this tab for free. And then you can click add to add that to your store. Now, I already have that in mm -hmm. mind, so we're going to skip that step. But from there, it will automatically add it in to the to the App Store. Now also you're going to need a driver and we're going to post the uh, links for this as well uh, yes. down on our article For the Scilabs chip you yes. have to have a driver for your computer mm -hmm. to recognize the, the NAS board. So you're going to want to install that. Once you install that driver I found that you've got to reboot. So once you reboot your Mac, your PC, it'll recognize that driver and be ready to go um, so that when you plug the board into the USB it actually recognizes the chip. Yep. So now we have it downloaded. We yeah. got it connected. Yep. Yes sir. So now the next thing, we're going to plug the board in and we're going to get Clean Flight pulled up. So we're going to go to our Google Chrome, go to our apps, and we're going to launch Clean Flight Configurator. And tell them what this cord is. What is that called? A mini USB? Yeah, this is a micro USB micro. actually. This is actually the same end that most uh, Android phones um, okay. work on. So we're going to plug this guy in. So we got our Clean Flight Configurator up and you're going to see that it says it's ready and it's ready to connect. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to plug this board in. And then we're going to go to our firmware flasher tab and we're going to choose the firmware that we want to use. Now most times um, from what Osborne and some of the people that I've read um, online have said is pick the latest version. Those are where they fixed some bugs and kind of got things dialed in. So uh, we're going to go to the latest version for the NAS. So I'm going to click on that one. I'm going to load firmware online and then I'm going to click full chip erase scroll down here and hit flash firmware and we'll so, scroll back up and you'll see the orange bar going across yeah. here where it says it's flashing and it's so yep it's going to verify that and programming successful that's what you want to see <laughs> that green bar is always a good thing so um, once that flashes the firmware then to the board we're going to go ahead and click on connect and you can see right on screen how you know you can move yep. the board. Now you can see it's not really working correctly because we haven't configured the accelerometers. Uh, our accelerometers. Super. 
So um, what you're going to do, you're obviously not going to want to do that until you can get this thing on the copter and yep. mounted so that it's straight and level, and then we'll calibrate um, the accelerometer. So is that our next step now? Yeah, we're going to configure um, you know, what type of, of okay. frame we're flying, so like whether it's a quad or a tricopter or whatever. Okay. Um, and we can do some of those things with the board um, not on the copter, but then once we mount the board, you can start setting up things like accelerometer calibration and PID tuning. And this can go all the way up to, what, six motors? Uh, yes, this will handle up to a hexcopter a or a Y6. Or yeah. a Y6, okay, very good. So it's really important here, because um, every multi-rotor is going to be different. You have a tricopter, hexacopter, octocopter. I actually can't do octocopter. Yeah, only up to six, I believe, with the acro. Okay. I'm not sure on the full naze board. I know there's a couple variations. Okay. I don't know if that'll do an octo, but I know this one's limited to six. But, but you can't make a quadcopter fly if it's programmed as a tricopter. Yeah, that's correct. So we need to tell it what it is, and how do you do that? Sure, we're going to go to the configuration tab. Okay. And that's going to be where, uh, in the motor mixer, we're okay. going to pick right here. So you just click this little drop down, and you see you can click tricopter, quad plus, quad X. There's a lot of different things. Um, you can even do helicopters, airplanes. It has the firmware for octocopters, but again, this board only has six motor output. Sure, sure. So we're going to set up, because of this little mini quad that we have here, we're going to go to quad X. Now, the one thing that I learned quickly is you have to click save almost yes. every time you change something. And it's something. not right there easily seen, is it? No, uh -uh. you got to scroll down a lot of times to find the save tab down at the bottom. Okay. Um, but in this configuration, we're gonna do one or two other things. Um, I like to check this tab, and under ESC and motor features, you're gonna check motor stop. Um, and what that basically does is it does not allow the motors to spin up when it's armed, and that's kind of more of a safety feature. Um, when you arm the board, um, and I know DJI Nazas do this, once you pull the sticks down and arm, it automatically brings the motors up to a certain RPM. Yeah, like 10% throttle. Basically. Sure, and gets it uh, ready for you to take off in a hover. I prefer, if, if we have the option, and we mm -hmm. do, to let that, um, when, the, when the board is armed, you can start the motors off the yes. bottom. So I feel like and that's safe. You can actually tell when the board is armed just by simply looking at the LED change. Yeah, you're going to go from a blue light to a blue and a green light, and that kind of green light for go. Yeah. So once we get that, um, we're going to look at a few other things. you got to go here to receiver mode. Now you can do PPM, you can do serial, a couple different things. We're flying um, on our Gropners, um, we're flying in parallel PWM, so you want to make sure that's checked. Um, we're flying on 1024. Um, some of the new DSMX on Spectrums, I believe you can go to 2048, but okay. I'm not sure exactly. Um, I think that's refresh rate or something like that. I, yeah, I honestly, it's, it's, it's the uh, resolution. Between DSM2 and DSMX, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's a communication, the speed at which it can communicate. Gotcha. So yeah. you want to make sure that that stuff is set up properly. And then we're going to go down here, click Save, and Great. Reboot. And you can see? Yep. And then the other thing is right here at the top of the screen, you're going to find um, it's going to say that it saved, that it rebooted, and that it's now ready again. So Very each good. time that you make a change, you'll see that on there. So the next thing then is to mount this thing to the copter that you're going to fly it mm -hmm. on, and then we're going to get into some more setup, um, check motor timing and ESC yeah. calibrations and all that sort of thing. Now it's really important, and this is a point where we're going to show you a nice fancy diagram because every receiver is different. If you have a Futaba receiver, if you have a, a Spectrum receiver, where the pins are going to be is going to be different. And that's why when you went down that line, you can also select whether you're, you're dealing with a Grop, new Futaba, sure. Spectrum, uh, right here at this board. So you want while you're, um, you're going through the configuration to tell it what kind of radio unit you're, you're talking to. Yeah, yeah. It can map out those channels because I think um, one of them is T-A-E-R and one of them is A-E-R-T or something. So um, different yeah, radios. Yeah, throttle's on channel three on yeah. Futaba. And it's on one on Spectrum, On right? Spectrum, okay. you got it. Things like that. So make sure you go down. Uh, we selected Grapner because that's what we're going to be flying. I sure. think Grapner and Spectrum are the same. Are the same. They? That's So you're, you're that's good correct. to go there. Um, but also make sure that you uh, check your configuration. While this is online, you can actually see what numbers your motors are supposed to be. Sure. And you can look online and see that, but it's very easily to visually watch that and, and just take a little pen and mark each motor boom. Mm -hmm. uh, mark what's front and one, two, three, four, and also take note of the rotation. Don't put your props on yet, though. And what's really nice is when we hook this up to the copter, we can go into the motors tab and you can actually, um, with the mouse on the computer, you can lift a slider mm -hmm. and individually control each motor and they're gonna fire up. So one really big thing to stress, never, ever, ever work with the props on your copter, Correct. especially during setup, um, simply because these motors are gonna be live when it's plugged into here. Super. So if you have a battery on, on the copter. So the next step is now, we're gonna hook it on here, we're gonna show you a fancy diagram, when you come back, this will be all on the board and we'll be moving forward.
All right, so we're back. The props are off. We're yes. following what you said to do. Yes, deal. sir. And, and I can't stress this enough. It is so important. We've had so many multi rotors jump off the workbenches. Yeah. It's dangerous, especially I've with these little race cars. I've seen quads. some really, really nasty pictures of people getting just sliced all up, and it's just yeah. not pretty. Never pretty, never ends well. So just take off your props. It's worth the timing. And you just set them aside here yep. and, uh, and put it there. And uh, while we hook this up here, you have something really unique that we're going to actually, if you're watching this right now, it's on a store as an element for multi rotors. Sure. And that's two things. That's going to be your little mount bracket here. Yeah. Um, I started off, and this is actually the first one I did, um, I made different size ones. Um, when we were flying for Rotor DR1 especially, I needed yeah. to be able to, if we did happen to have, we were fortunate we didn't have any crashed helicopters, yeah. but if we did, we could take that board off, pop it onto a new frame, get it flying quickly. Um, so I made some flight controller mounts um, for the Electro Hub that you can center your flight controller on, and then it can be put onto the to the copter and either bolted down or centered right over that, that center of gravity of the copter. Um, Peter was really nice and laser cut me out some. It takes me like two hours to make this thing. <laughs> so he, uh, well, not two hours, yeah. but you know, it takes forever to cut one out by hand. He laser cut me out some nice ones with some center marks. Um, and so then this is going to be something that we're going to have available yeah. for the naze. It fits the naze board perfectly. It even has the mounting holes if you choose to use standoffs. If you want to use double sided tape, you can do that. Um, and then it even is going to have the little standoffs on the bottom to lift it up and allow the wiring to just go right down well, through the hole. And this is in super, the center. super clean. I love how you even took a Sharpie marker, you colored it black. <laughs> I'm and really the wires. I love having clean builds. Um, it just looks nice and then it's easier to work on. If yes. you have this rat's nest of a wire mess, it's just, it's just ugly. It gets and, messy. Yeah, it's, it's messy. Also, the cleaner it is, less likely it is to snag and get ripped sure. off and things like that. So you got that. Now, the other thing, just while we're talking about it, another thing you've added to our store um, is these angle arms. And yeah. people don't know much about angle arm quads. Sure. Why don't you enlighten us real quick? Because this okay. is a race quad and there's a real specific reason why I'm angle arms are I'm, I'm super passionate about this subject. A lot of the guys on the Facebook chat that I talk with a lot, um, know this already. I added dihedral to this, and, and, I, and I cannot claim that to be my idea. Um, I seen this on the DJI S800 and the S900, S1000. Okay. They're big aerial video platforms. They added some dihedral to the copter. Um, I went kind of on my own from there to figure out why, and it just all made sense. Um, the thrust angles going down on a flat frame are all zero to the ground. Mm -hmm. um, what's happening with dihedral is it's kind of adding some opposing thrust angle, and so then these kind of counteract each other and it creates almost um, the way a coaxial helicopter almost feels like it's flying yep. inside of a bowl. It, a cone. A, a cone, yeah. Mm -hmm. It makes it almost self-stabilizing yeah. um, from my experiences, I will add. So um, one of the things about a quadcopter especially, they added it to a hexacopter and an octo, but I wanted to see if it would fix some of the just inherent instabilities in quad frames. When you come through a corner on a quad frame, if you nose into a corner super hard, um, two of the motors are going to speed up, two of the motors are going to speed down, and that's how you're yawing the copter. Um, the problem with that on a standard quad is if you nose into a corner hard enough, these are almost going to stop. So now you're only supporting your quad frame on this plane because these motors have darn near shut down and you can get that wonkiness mm -hmm. that you feel a quad coming through a corner. Yeah. Um, this has almost completely eliminated that. Nice. Um, if you have your board dialed in and your copter balanced correctly, this thing just kind of floats through a corner just like it's on rails. I can have this on its end and do funnels with it. Well, the thing I really so, love about this too is, is say you do have where it's tilting, this is actually generating more lift than this, just like a normal dihedral airplane, sure. which self rides it. So it's really good for camera platforms and race quads. Indeed. And also when you're flying forward. Yes, that's what I was just yeah. gonna say. This thing, these ang the arm angle here, when this becomes parallel to the ground, it doubles the angle back here and it's just pushing you forward. I took, um, just uh, it's for some experiments, I took a quadcopter that had flat arms, I took it out, I flew it, um, and then I came in and I cut them, I put the angle brackets in and I went right back out and flew it. I didn't change the, the, the gains, I didn't change anything else, same motor, same props, and the thing was faster forward flight, um, and just the agility was increased in its stability. Like one of the things I've, I've loved about my angled arms, I fly these on my big, huge thousand millimeter copters as well, um, in manual or rate mode where there's no, any, there's no accelerometer, there's no auto leveling, you can let go of this thing and it just wants to just sit there and just stay in one spot. Yeah. Um, in fact, when you flew my Y6 copter, it was like 30 miles an hour wind out there. 
ridiculous. And you can let go of the sticks and it just wants to sit. It's self-leveling. Yeah. It's self-leveling. So that's our spiel about angled arms because a lot of people are going to look here and say, what in the world are these? Yeah. Why are they working? We sure. never had it on the show before. It's kind of passively been put in our store. Yeah. But um, if you guys want something that makes mounting your boards a little bit easier and also the angled arms, check it out. It's available now. Yeah. There's a couple key things when you're mounting the board that you can do wrong accidentally that will make your life miserable. And I want to just address that now. So if this is mounted, make sure this is the front of Eric's copter here. Yep. Make sure this little arrow is pointing forward. Yes. It's very, very crucial. You can switch it either which way. You're not going to really notice a difference until you go to fly it and yeah. it flips over on you. Indeed. And also when you're dialing in and, and the control seam backwards, you know something's up. Also, a lot of people get confused about inputs and outputs. Outputs always go to the ESC. Yeah. Inputs always go from the receiver. So you have your input from your transmitter into your receiver. It goes, it talks to your board. Your board then talks to your ESCs and tells it what to do. Yep. And the board is what intercepts those outside interferences and counteracts that. And that's why it's kind of put in place between the receiver and the ESCs. But make sure that you have this plugged into your receiver and with this little breakout cable, it makes it pretty convenient. And also, Eric kind of colored these wires here. You'll notice this little dot and this little uh, blank spot here. That's where your power and your ground are. All the rest are signal wires. And if you watch that diagram, it's probably pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, and if you hold this one up here, you can see you've got ground, power, and then all the rest white. I just colored them because I like nice. everything to be it's yeah, very, nice very clean. Looking. All right, so moving forward. Moving forward. What are we going to do? Well, we're going to go ahead and plug this cable back into our board, and we're going to calibrate the accelerometer. So the thing that is crucial to calibrating an accelerometer on any flight controller, not just a NACE, KK2 board, NASA board, any of those, is we cannot touch the table. You can't even so much as breathe. Yeah, you can't even breathe on this thing. He's touching the table. He's touching the table. He's touching um, the table. So when we calibrate this accelerometer, you just want it to be perfectly flat and level, and okay. you want to click on connect. And then we're going to go to the, uh, right here in the very first tab, it's set up, and you're going to hit Calibrate Accelerometer. And you're going to see that it says Acceleration Calibration, Accelerometer Calibration Started, and then Calibration Finished. Now you can touch it, because it's finished. And look how quick that is. Yeah, and so then when you, you come around, the, there, Mikey, check this out. If you pick the copter up, you can actually see it even has an arrow pointing forward. It, they, they really did a nice job with this. Just can't even tell. It's just pretty darn awesome. Yeah. So you can see exactly the orientation and the, you can see that your accelerometer yeah. is working properly. Now keep in mind, if you're picking up a quadcopter and you're looking at a tricopter, it's not the right configuration. Not the right configuration. Go back and go to the configuration and change it out. All right, so we got this all set up. Yeah. The accelerometers, what's next? Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do then is gonna go back into our configuration tab and just you know double check. We've got quad X, we've got our motors checked for stop. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, let's see, we're gonna save and reboot, and then we're gonna go into... And there are so many amazing functions uh, in the system. We're just doing the basics. We wanna get you up and flying with a quadcopter. As we go through and stuff, if there's anything special we need to make notes, we'll make that noted in our build video. Yeah. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is check our channel mapping so that that way we can plug a battery into this thing and make okay. sure that channel mapping is set correctly. So you're gonna go into the receiver tab and we're gonna click channel map and then we're gonna make sure that we are on JR, Spectrum, and Gropner because we're flying the Gropner. Okay. And then once that is set, you'll see it, it reflects that in the, the box. Throttle, we'll hit save. elevator, rudder, one, two, three, four. Yes. So we're gonna hit save. So now we need to power things up. Once again, if you don't have your props off, take them off. Yes, indeed. We I can't sounded angry there. Yeah, I, my angry I know, you, we can't stress that enough. Make sure the props are off, especially now because we're gonna start to connect a battery to the copter and start yes. testing, you know, some of the motor, uh, you know, which direction they're spinning and that sort of thing. So we're going to arm our transmitter, plug this guy in, and then we're going to connect to our board and we're going to go to the motors tab. Mm -hmm. And so what you like that? I do. Yes, it's kind of fun. So when we go to our motors tab, um, we're going to make sure that the motor test mode is checked. And so when we check that, that gives us the ability to grab this master control. And this is why I was telling about props. These motors are live. So like, I'm gonna move the mouse on the computer and I'm gonna be able to uh, increase and decrease throttle. So props on the copter. Bad thing. Bad situation. Unless you wanna fly it radio controlled wise through a USB cable. Yeah, not so much. So here's what we're gonna do. You're gonna check that motors check tab. And what this is gonna allow us to do is find out where the minimum uh, throttle setting is for our motors. Sure. So we're gonna grab this master. 
We're going to go up until we hear those motors come on. Okay, now once you're close, you can use the arrow keys, at least I found on the Mac, and you can yeah. dial this in, and you're going to get those numbers to start rising, and I think mine is 1060, so when we hit 1060, my motors come on. Nice. So that's where um, we're going to set our minimums for our throttle, and we're going to do that, we're going to uncheck this, we're going to go back to the setup in the configuration tab, and right here under minimum throttle, you're going to see I have that already plugged in at 1060. Um, default for middle throttle is 1500 and you can kind of leave the rest of those there that usually works pretty well um, but the minimum throttle is going to give you the the you know throttle right off the bottom so does this replace your uh, does this replace your uh, ESC calibration no we're okay. going to do that um, as well um, that'll be another step coming up nice function with this is with motor one two three and four you can actually use that function Eric just showed you instead of using the master slider yeah. you can actually slide one two three and four make sure one two three and four are at the proper location and also they're spinning in the right direction. Spinning in the right direction. So if you look right here on the configuration tab uh, under your mixer, it gives you the rotations for each of your props. Um, so we're, we're gonna be able to go back to that motors tab. We'll check our motor and then we'll go to the individual sliders and you'll see here that motor one should, should spool up. And so, one? yep, that's okay. motor one. So if we put a piece of masking tape around the edge of here, now mm -hmm. you're gonna be able to easily see which direction those motors are spinning. So now we can put that on there and we're going to be able to see, um, it scares me. Yes, indeed. So you can just use the arrow keys again, kind of come up to 1060 and that'll be the slowest amount of throttle. And you can just check which direction that's going. You can feel it too. Yep. And motor one, according to the diagram, which it does allow you to see those here as well. Yep. Um, is spinning clockwise and we were spinning clockwise. So we're good. You do so this on all good. four motors. Do that on all four motors. Cool. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do, um, we've set our throttle minimums, we've checked the motor rotations, we got all that correct. Um, the next thing we wanna do is calibrate our ESCs. Um, so the old way of doing it, remember how you'd have to plug in a battery and your throttle would have to be at the top and it would beep and then you'd yes. pull the throttle down. It's it basically work that way. Yeah, it's basically the same principle, um, but we're just gonna do it within the configurator instead of on the radio. Okay. So we've got our transmitter, on, got it plugged in, um, we're going to check our check tab and move the master switch all the way to the top. Then we're going to plug in the battery to the copter, which arms the board, you hear him beep, and then you're going to grab the master, pull it back down, you'll hear it beep again. Nice. Then we unplug, and now we've calibrated our ESCs, and that is pretty That's simple. Easy. So, once we get that done, the next thing we want to do is set up um, our arming, yeah. um, how we want the copter to arm. There's a couple different ways we can do that. You can arm uh, traditionally um, by pushing the stick down into the right or down into the left. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's another thing that's really neat about this board is you can arm using a switch. And I like that. I do too. I feel like that's really safe. You've got to toggle on. You can't bump it by accident. I mean, I guess you could bump the switch well, too, but... And half the time I forget, how do I arm this one? Sometimes this they're both down. Sometimes, you know, <laughs> phantoms are together. Yeah. 350. Sure. So this is nice. You can put on a switch. You can have the same switch. And also, you can mess around with things and know that's not going to come to life on you. Exactly. So I'll demonstrate that. We'll uh, go ahead and plug. Yep. We're, we're still connected to our clean flight. We're going to go into um, our modes tab. So let's go ahead and plug this guy in. And you're going to see on the top, you want to assign switches on your radio, and every radio is different. So yep. what I did is I assigned a two-position switch for arming on and off, and then I picked a three-position switch for the two, the couple different flight modes that I want. I okay. want rate or manual. I like to call it manual mode because that's the NASA's way of doing things. Kind of like acro. Yeah. So uh, manual, acro, rate mode. There's lots of different um, okay. terms for it, but it's just the no help. No, okay. tr no training <laughs> wheels. So um, we're gonna do training, or uh, no training wheels on part one. We'll go to part two or position two. Um, and that's gonna be horizon mode, which on the naze board is gonna allow you, from what I've understood with it, it allows you rate mode up to a certain point, but I believe when you let off the sticks, it'll auto level itself. Okay. Um, that's how I've understood it. If I'm wrong about that, please let us know. I think that's how that goes. It's kind of confusing in the descriptions. Yeah. Um, then angle mode is very comparable to like a Phantom or a Nozzle Board's Addy mode. Um, it's just basically auto level. Auto you level. click into that third position, it goes to angle mode, and that's going to be auto leveling. Oh, very cool. So what you're going to do for that, um, once we have our yeah. transmitter plugged in, and oftentimes, I can't say for this, but I'm just going to show you guys, even though, uh, let me see here, we'll hit back. 
Uh, a lot of different, you know, radios are different here. To program the switch on this grappner, I simply went into channel set, and then you can see, where is it at? I'm looking upside down. Aux right here. Normally it's just like as you see here. We simply touch it, and then it says select the switch. You want this one right here? Uh, yes. You flip it. And it sets it right. And automatically says, oh, you flip this switch. This is one you want. You're good to go. Yeah. Which I think is a really neat way of doing it. I know the Spectrum radio, which I've used, has a little bit different way of doing it. you got to go into a menu Special and there's menus switch and selecting, but that's super easy. Yeah. And I think other, other manufacturers are similar to this as well, too. Yeah. So once you go into your modes tab, which is where we're going to set up the arming, the angle, and the horizon, um, you can add a range, which on the screen here, you're going to see that I've already done that, but you can add a range. You're going to set up the aux switch that you want it to work with, and in our case, it's aux one. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you're going to set the range. The yellow over here, there's a little yellow, which is the resting position. Sorry, I was touching switches. No, that's okay. Actually, if you want to flick the switch for the arming, which will be that one back there, you're going to watch that yellow go over into this range and light up green okay. to let you know that your arming sequence is working properly. So nice. if you flip it back, you're going to see that go back over to here into its resting state. So what's really nice about the way that the naze board is set up, you can set these different ranges and you can adjust where those ranges go and how you want so that if you so have... If you got a slider, you could get like yes, tons of different functions. You can put all, all kinds of different functions on the same switch and each position will do a different thing. Nice. So then the angle mode I have set up with this range. So if you, in horizon mode, so if you flick to the first position, you'll see horizon lights up. Um, and then if you flick to the second position, it goes all the way over to here, and then we've got angle mode. I love how it works very visually. So yeah, that's basically how we're going to set up um, the arming, angle, and horizon modes. Um, I'm going to talk just for a second, if you don't mind, on adjustments tab. Okay. Um, the adjustments tab from the little bit of research I've done, and I think this will probably be a future episode. This is definitely just kind of an intro to the naze yeah. board. This isn't the end all say all. This is just to basically get, you know, get a board put on the copter and get it out there to where you can start yeah. flying. Um, what, what I've been reading about the adjustments tab and some of the things Osbjorn was talking with me about, you can actually program rate profiles. So um, you could set up, if I understand it correctly, you could set up a, a rate profile which allows your mini quad to be on, on super high rates for acro flip a switch and switch to a completely different rate uh, profile, which will allow it to fly super smooth, you know, basically like adding dual rates to, nice. the, to the situation. So it's kind of um, like with, remember when we did the 350, how they had uh, manual mode, which felt yes. well, and then also an AP mode, it was really dumbed down and soft, Yeah, had a lot of other training right wheels on it. Right at the flick of a switch, and I know nice. there's lots more that you can do with that adjustments tab, and I think we'll probably get into that the more, okay. the more that we learn there's about it. There's definitely going to be more than one video on this, we just want to get you flying. Okay, so the last thing we have to do, now that we've set up our switches, we've got it armed, we've got it, the accelerometer is, is calibrated, uh, we've set our speed control calibration. There's one last thing we have to do, um, and that's go to the receiver tab and make sure that when we push the stick the right direction, that it goes the right direction. Okay. So when we push roll, you're gonna see on the roll, it's actually gonna move. So if I push left, it should go left. If I push right, it should go right, and it should rest in the middle as close to 1500 as you possibly can. That's the naze board's uh, uh, measurement for center. Okay. So um, what you're gonna do if it does not rest at 1500 is go into your radio sub trims and dial that as close as you can. Um, I did it one way and it went to like 1504. So 1499 was obviously the closer to 1500. Pick the closest one or else you're gonna have your copter drifting. And then you'd have to trim that out, which we don't recommend. And on NASA, on APM, on Vector, a lot of times they have you move the sticks all the way to one extreme or the other or move them all around and flip all the switches. You're basically just manually doing this. And setting center. Yeah. Yep. So you check yaw left and right, roll ref left and right, um, throttle obviously. Uh, and the throttle is obviously not going to be set at 1500. That's the exception. Um, you can also see your switches. Yeah, you can also see your switches to make sure those are moving in within what range. Now, now with pitch, when you give pitch, what's supposed to be down? Um, when you push down, it should move right, and when you pull back, it should move left. And I always forget that. I always forget that as well, so, so you have to make sure that's correct. So push forward on the stick, it moves to the right, pull back on the stick, it moves to the left. Indeed. So, um, once we do that, um, PID tuning is the last thing. Okay. Um, basically, the defaults are pretty close, so fly on the defaults first, and then we can start making some settings from there. Um, okay. If you're, and so that's gonna bring us to talking about PID gains and what that means. Yes. So now, at this point though, should we put our props on? Yeah, I think we can put the props on safely now. We'll disconnect from, uh, from here. We're gonna save in each of our tabs just to make sure everything is set up the way we want. 
if you don't save, um, it's not gonna keep when you disconnect. And I've done that a couple of times. I set up all my it's angle and horizon modes and I didn't, I forgot to save um, because the save tab, you have to scroll down to get to it. So um, it would be a, nice if they put that up higher. Yeah, indeed. So we're gonna hit disconnect and we'll power off everything. And now we can put some props on this guy and take it out and fly. All right, the one other thing you can do inside of this adjustments tab is you can actually set up dials or switches for in-flight yeah. PID adjustments. So you could theoretically, you could put yourself in a default situation, go out, bring it up until your multi-rotor starts to, to twitch a little, back it down, and then just land, set those values, and you're done. And that's a really good time right now to talk about theory. Rather than talking about it outside when we're freezing and getting snowed on, sure. uh, there's three things. There's P, there's I, there's D. It seems like there's a mystery about how they work, what they are. Um, there's complicated explanations, but we're just going to try to walk you through the simplest way to dial in your multi-rotor, and then you can get much more advanced. That's where you're talking like with pulse width modulations and yeah. all the advanced settings. PPM and PWM and all, all these different things. Stuff and matching those, um, but P is the most important. P is going to be what uh, counteracts outside forces. Sure, and that's your proportional gain. Yes, proportional gain. And if your P is too high, you're going to get a wobble. But what you want to do is you want to slowly raise that P gain, that P value up as high as you can to the point where you start getting that little bit of wobble, and then you back it off a hair. And that is your optimum P setting. Now, sure. if you have blades on your multi rotor that aren't balanced and you have vibration all through it, you're gonna get erratic readings that are not gonna be proper. So make sure that your blades and your props are all balanced. We got some really good links bound that we can put below, um, balancing your props, but don't ever neglect that. A little piece of tape, dynamic run up, it's yep. all you need to get a good experience. Get you out pretty of it. close, yeah. Make sure there's no vibration. The closer you can get with with prop balancing and that sort of thing, it, the better. Um, the higher you can raise your P gain, the less vibration you have in your copter um, because there's not that white noise around that that board. Yes. So um, if your copter's balanced and the props are balanced and there's a little bit, of, there's a lot less vibration, yeah. you can raise your P gain up, which essentially then locks your copter in. And that's better. why you don't actually even bolt in your your multi uh, your boards. Yeah. You actually use double sided tape both on mounting and on your board. And the board and it kind of acts as a dampener. Yeah, very cool. So once we get our peaking optimized, our next is going to be I. I. And one thing to note also, a lot of the guys we've read about on uh, the forums and that sort of thing who are just gurus about PID settings, they're saying to set your P um, with I and D at zero so that you get a real optimal reading on P without having the I or the D affecting that P. Yes. So you can yep. dial it in really close. And I stands for integral. And integral is kind of hard to, to imagine, but imagine as you give inputs, what integral is doing is kind of always following your stick. Sure. And the higher the integral value, the more it's trying to follow your stick. And what your desire is, is actually, it's kind of almost combating, and I'm gonna get a lot of people mad at me, I'm gonna probably saying <laughs> something wrong, but it almost feels like it's combating what the, uh, what the P is doing. It's sure. kind of, where, where P wants to make it snap back and react to where it is currently, the eye is gonna be like, whoa, hold down there, simmer down, yeah. you know? And you'll notice that your eye is adjusted properly when you give it forward and it doesn't just kind of slap back and stuff. I know there's sure. accelerometers that are doing that for you, but um, it's hard to describe. But basically when your eye is getting to the point of being too high, you're gonna get a slow oscillation either this way this way. Sure, and, and, you if you're, and if your eye is too low, it's actually when you push the stick and let off, it's gonna wanna recenter itself. It's not gonna hold that angle. So when you go to take off into forward flight and you push the stick forward, I, when it's set properly, is gonna remember that last stick position and it's gonna hold that angle. Yes. So that's kind of an easy way of explaining it. You want that copter when you roll to the left or roll to the right, when you let off the stick, you don't want it to get you know, wobbly, you want it to hold that angle and do what it's told. Yeah. Now this is completely separate from auto level. Mm -hmm. Okay, accelerometers give you auto level, that's when you add these functionalities. What do they call it in here? Horizon mode or? Yeah, there's angle mode, there's horizon, horizon mode. mode. You want to do this in, back to level. in rate mode, in manual yeah, control. Yeah, this, this is acro th that we're setting it up with. So once you get your eye to where it's a slow oscillation, you back that down a little bit. And a lot of people like KK2s, they don't even worry about D. No, in is, fact, uh, I don't know if you can do that. I think in earlier firmware, you yeah. couldn't even adjust D in the KK board, yeah. if I'm correct. D is the least important, but a lot of people like it. And D is, is a derivative? Uh, yeah, it's derivative, and that one is super Think of dampening. Dampening, yeah. Osborne was like it just it acts as a dampener to the P gain. 
Okay, yep. And that keeps it from kind of bouncing back and forth like a shock absorber for your sure. multi-rotor. So rather than it oscillating back and forth where it's constantly overshooting, you can dial up the D. But the problem is if you get your D too high, you get a very sluggish, yep. slow reacting multi-rotor. So oftentimes when you go through your P, you adjust your I and you start hitting with your D, sometimes you have to go back to your P and I again. And just readjust a little bit because it does carry yep. over and affect it. But be careful not to hit this and then reevaluate this. Sometimes it's better just to leave it alone. Yeah. Lots of flights dial into your tuning, but once you get your P and I as close to where you want it, you should have a pretty good darn ship. And you want to do really small increment changes. You don't yeah. want to go from 10% to 50% and so on and so forth. Um, the one other thing to talk about in the PID tuning um, is also the roll, pitch, and yaw rates. What are those? Um, that's almost like the way a dual rate works on a transmitter. You can increase the throw and it would be to KK board users, it's going to be like stick scaling. Um, it's going to increase or decrease the amount of, of effect you have from your stick to your cost. So say you're flying like an AP platform, something like this. You don't need to necessarily flip it, although I've sure. seen this thing flip. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you don't need to necessarily flip it. You're probably carrying a camera. You want it to be very docile. Sure. Um, I know David, when he dials his in, he has very high expo, very soft on the sticks. Sure. So it's very smooth and fluid. But something like this, yeah. you want to flip you it. You want to flip it and get crazy. And so you want that really razor yeah. sharp control. You're going to lower your expos down. Yep. You're going to get that thing just flying like it's on rails. And so higher rates. Are Le gonna... Leave the settings as is, uh, test fly, and yeah. then dial it into your liking. And this is not something that you need to adjust in order to make it fly properly. And do it slowly. It's all about the experience. <laughs> yes, yeah, slowly. I made that mistake, I'll admit. I went really high on my rate because I got impatient. And I went outside and, man, it was all over. I had to, <laughs> had to land in two feet of snow real fast and brush it all off because it was just so high. So oh, Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. And always, if you like what you have, take a screenshot of it, too. Take a screenshot of your PIs and Ds. And yeah. uh, once you have it dialed, and that way you can always go back. Or say you go down a wrong hole and, and it's like, I don't know what's going on. Before you change everything and go crazy, take a screenshot of that. You can always go back there. Even a cell phone picture is really nice. Matter of fact, Osborne helped us out yeah. by sending us his cell phone pictures of his screen yep. uh, to dial in some of these bigger ships. Speaking of him, he also gave us uh, a guy on, um, we just Googled it. Um, it's yeah. Oscar. And forgive me, Oscar, if I, if I mess up your last name. It's either Liang or Lang. If you go to Oscar Lang, he has an incredible incredible write-up. I've never seen. Yeah, but hands down, of PID explanations, the differences between base flight and clean flight, and why you might like each, and he just goes into just extreme detail about PID settings and tuning, and so check that out um, if you get a chance. It's more like a blog post, but it's just yeah. full of information. And very well written, very easy to understand as well. And actually, I think we're going to put a link to that in our... It's down in the article link, absolutely. Yeah. And a matter of fact, we do our, or we do, if, if you watch this, we may already have our electronic solutions now. They're coming very soon. Sure. And uh, when, as we build different machines in different formats with different motors that we carry, we're going to post our values and it'll be at flighttest.com slash setups. Setup or setups. Or or setups. Yeah, yeah. Which one did we pick? I think um, we choose. We talked about I think about we'll do both. setups. I like yeah. setups. So if you go to flighttest.com slash setups, we're going to make a whole wiki page with all the different setups that are different multi rotors, maybe even some model memories, but we're going to start with our actually control board setups with the stock motors we carry. Sure. We're going to be carrying a lot of Emax products uh, for our motors and ESCs. Yeah. Just so if you build something from beginning to end with our product line, that you can easily go out and have the best experience possible. So you ready to put this in the air? I am. Let's all do right. it. Okay, so the gains were a little high that time, yes. so I dialed them back into what I think is pretty close, so let's see what happens. So we're going to arm, the green light comes on, and... So I put that little sticker on the front just so I can see what front and back is. Yeah. You can use colored booms, colored props. Colored props are kind of funny because they're spinning, you don't really see them very well. Colored booms are a better way to go. Yeah, indeed. So this thing is flying super nice. It's dialed in pretty close, you know, just a little rocket wow. ship. And like you can see when it comes through a corner, those arms seem to just really help smooth Keeps things out. Keeps it tucked out. into the corner, doesn't yeah, fall out it does. of it. So if you want to do some flips with it, you just get up to a safe altitude and we'll see how she rolls. Just <laughs> right on. 
And then also the angled arms help you with your rolls because the motors are already facing in the direction. The you thrust want to angles go. are out. It also helps on descent too because the thrust angles are slightly pushing out, so you're not flying through the prop wash yeah. quite as much because it's going out. So yeah, we'll do some more aerobatics. So you can do nice slow rolls as well, where you can just kind of roll it right over and just locked in. I am just so impressed with this board. Never thought the the uh, electro hub would turn into a, a race quad little front tumble, little back tumble, just loops, rolls, and it's just, it, like, I'm not, like, freaking out about it. It's just so locked <laughs> in, it doesn't, it's just, like, normal flying. And things you don't want to hear is if you jack the throttle real hard and you hear, I, I, can't, I can't make that noise very well. If you hear a rapid uh, fluctuation on the motors, that means you still have some gain issues you need to address. So uh, take it back down, adjust the gains a little bit more. Man, that does turn on a dime. It just turns on a dime. And that's a little bit higher rate setting than probably what you're gonna wanna fly when you first start. But, you know, I've been playing with it a little bit and just getting it locked in. And <laughs> you can just really put it where you want it and it just does everything. And it's pretty windy out here today and it's actually, you know, yeah, it's, I mean, it's not nice crazy, way. but there's enough of a breeze that you and, notice. And you're not in auto level right now, no, are you? No, huh? this is just in rate mode. Um, so if you bring it into auto level, we can bring it right here and then it's cold. This is angle mode, and I mean it just, you can dumb thumb it and it'll, it'll yep. just auto level itself perfectly. And it is really cold, so we're going to cut this short, <laughs> this uh, flight a little short. You happy with the gains? Oh, I love it. It's really dialed in pretty nicely, actually. Awesome. So we landed, and I just love this switch, because you can just take that thing and just, just disarm it, and now, you know, with it disarmed, you can work the throttle, and it. just, it's safe. So, it works. I like that. Let's go back inside, it's freezing. <laughs> Deal. So friends, we want to thank you for watching. Um, the Naze board has an immense amount of features, and we are going to dig deeper. Um, and one of the blessings we have is we're just learning. Yeah. Um, Osborne, Crafty Dan, uh, this wonderful gentleman, I can't pronounce his last name. Oscar Lang. Oscar Lang. <laughs> uh, you guys are giving us the information that we get the opportunity to present, and we're truly thankful for you for that. So we hope that this got you up and got you tuning. Yeah. And we look forward to seeing your experiences, and we hope to also do this with more boards, too. As more boards come sure. out, we want to do tutorials on hopefully everything, but we're really passionate about the Naze, and obviously the vector as well too. We'll see what comes down in the future. Indeed. Friends, we're gonna put up in the air. We'll see you next time. See you next time.